Cool. All right, here we go. Yep, yep. Good afternoon, you filthy apes. Welcome to AMC and ADD, where we buy, we hold, and we screw the hedgy. Today, I'd like to give you guys uh, the opportunity to hear from Darth, who I met on Twitter. Darth has done some amazing work at digging into the inner workings of computer sh uh, share, and I wanted to give him an opportunity to present his findings uh, for the ape community to be able to reference, as you may be possibly thinking about uh, a decision to transfer or buy shares through computer share. I want to preface that with uh, that nothing that Darth or I say here should be taken as financial advice, um, as we're not certified to give such advice. With that disclaimer, I'd like to welcome Darth. Darth, thanks for joining us today. Please enlighten our smooth brains. Uh, absolutely, Casey. Thanks. Thanks for having me. And everybody in Ape Nation out there, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you know, right off the bat, like Casey said, man, I, I, I'm not a financial advisor. I don't give financial advice. I'm a retail investor who's all in on AMC. And it just, this led me to start digging into the, the whole, what does computer share do? Who are they? What does it mean when you directly register a share, DRS them? And this is just some of the information that I found out as a retail investor, and I felt that it was important to share with the aid community because it is a, it's a topic of discussion that comes up quite often. So um, back just to give you a little bit of info on, on where this all stemmed from, uh, back at the end of August, early September, I was heavily involved in the Reddit community. Um, and a lot of this information started to pop up and it, the way it was presented to me had me asking a lot of questions and a lot of questions that either couldn't be answered at the time or when I asked specific questions, it was a very uh, hostile environment. Um, you know, the information that I'm presenting here today is all sourced information that you'll be able to find directly from computer share, directly from the DTC, directly from the DTCC, directly from the SEC. Uh, one of my biggest things is, is I do not deal with trust me bronomics. Um, I have a mentality of don't tell me, show me. So I started digging and these are just the things that I found as I was digging along the way. Um, you know, one of the major things that, that people need to understand about computer share is what they actually are. And what computer share is, is a, a transfer, they are registered and licensed transfer agent. Um, if anybody would like to check on that, uh, the SEC licensing number for computer share reported on file is uh, 085-11340. And that uh, file was updated on uh, 2019. So this is about as close to current as you can be. Um, it is still valid in the licensing. So once you understand a exact that the, they are a licensed transfer agent, then you can start to dig into well, what does a transfer agent do? And essentially what a transfer agent does is they are a private organization. Uh, in fact, uh, computer share itself is actually publicly traded. Um, it, it has its own ticker and everything along those lines. So what it does is it, it acts as a reporting agent for the DTC or the DTCC. So one of the what uh, Casey has up on the, uh, the screen here, it is a flow chart from the DTC, DTCC that basically shows what transpires when you actually DSR a share, which is essentially putting your name as the ownership of said share. And as you can see by the flow chart, it, you, know, you have the name on the share and it circulates its way through the DTC and DTCC as the DTC has outsourced its reporting as a registrar to computer share as a transfer agent to report to the DTCC. And you say, okay, well, listen, you know, that's really great if you understand that, but can we, can we say this in eight? So you basically have to look at this entire group, these three entities as a, a library. And you have your librarian, which is the DTC, you have your card catalog, 
which is computer share. And then you have your actual library, which is the DTCC. So they each have their own individual roles, but ultimately they're all linked together in the aspect that, you know, these one reports to the other, to the other, to the other, and it becomes this basically a circle of reporting and documentation between the three of them. Um, the DTC and the DTCC are not government agencies. So they are regulated and policed by the SEC, um, but they act independently from government. So you know, the, these are the people who are responsible for reporting what's going on and the accuracy of what's going on with shares. So what uh, Casey's showing there is, is essentially the same graph that was set up before, the same chart that he, you just saw before, but this one is actually directly from Computer Share's website. And again, as you can see, you know, everything flows back into itself. There's, there's no real end point. All arrows lead back to this original section this is this original place yeah so it, it, everything cycles backwards in and itself so it's, it's a constant spiral of information and reporting over and over again um and that's something very valuable to understand when you're directly registering these shares because the reality of it is is that you're you yes in fact you are putting your personal name on this share and registering it to yourself but you know, there's confusion about, okay, well, does it ever get removed from the DTCC or does it ever get removed from the DTC? Well, the reality of it is, is that one, the DTC has hired computer share to do the reporting for the DTCC. So it just is a constant flow of information back and forth between these three entities. And again, they, they operate independently from government while there is oversight from the SEC. It, it, these are an entities three entities, three uh, corporations who work together in reporting and documentation and support of said documentation. So understanding that, I think it's very valuable and, and very important for everyone to familiarize themselves with uh, the terms and service of computer share, because it's very valuable once you understand what they do and how they're licensed to do it, it's extremely important that you, you read and understand the terms of service for computer care because it's vastly different than your licensed brokers, especially in the United States. And this is something I wanna clarify that, that my re I live in the United States, so my research is strictly when I'm speaking about it related to the United States. I would hope that any of our foreign apes would take what they have seen here and do this research for themselves because it does change by region. Um, there's different rules in Europe, as there's different rules in Canada, as there's different rules in Africa. So, but it's all going to, you're going to be able to find the same information if you start down this path. So just make sure that if you are a foreign ape, that you you do this due diligence yourself because I'm not familiar with the, the as in, the trading rules for Europe, let's say. So, you know, it's very possible that computer share could be a licensed broker in Europe, which would then change this entire conversation for European aid. And I implore you, please, you know, go do this research yourself. This is why we're supplying this with the documentation and the source material, because it really is important. You know, I said at the beginning, I don't do that trust me bronomics stuff. I implore everybody to go out there, you use this as a starting point and, and dig, 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 because the figures you're going to find is sometimes they'll be mind blowing and other times you're going to be like, it could just be reaffirmation of, you know, I, I, this is what I thought. I knew this, but now I know for sure. So, you know, I, I can't stress enough to, to understand and, and familiarize yourself with the terms of service for computer share. And I know, you know, a lot of people, <laughs> we a lot, you relate back to that uh, South Park episode with the uh, Sentai pad where, you know, Kyle ends up getting in the middle of a human centipede because he didn't read the terms of service for his Apple thing. Well, uh, the terms of service for computer share is relatively short. Um, you know, there's about 22 bullet points. It's about five pages if you printed it out. 
you know, it, it's just extremely important for you to take the time and read it. it. It's very straightforward. There is obviously some legalese in there, but it's nothing that you can't Google and research to figure out exactly what they're talking about. Um, so, it, like I said, I implore everybody to familiarize themselves with computer shares terms of service. And it is it, it, it's very, very valuable. If you if nothing else from this call, if nothing else from this video you take away from this is to familiarize yourself with the terms of service and then cross check that with the, the SEC rules and the, the rules with the DTC, the DTCC. I just so, went ahead and posted um, the uh, computer share terms of service, online service terms and conditions into the general chat. So uh, giving everybody an opportunity to be able to uh, to go visit that if they should want to. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Casey. So um, one of the things that I, I really want to focus on when you start getting and looking at the terms of service is your the computer shares liability to you as a user of computer share once you initiate and, and make an account with computer share this is what you're seeing here this is everything that you need to know and and know it well because you just opening an account you're agreeing to all of this you know and there there's no second you know you don't have to sign some waiver or anything like that when you open an account with computer share this is what you're agreeing to period and this was something that really started to raise red flags for me because of the legal liability for it and then the financial liability that they put on themselves a law or that they don't put on themselves along with the understanding that as a transfer agent they're not they don't carry the same ability to insure your account as a licensed broker does so that's something that, that you need to keep in mind because you know when, when you have an account with, with a licensed broker you have there's insurance there's an insurance company a specific insurance company in fact let me get this right here it is the ah okay it is the Security Investors Protection Corporation, short known as the SIPC. And these are the people who insure your brokerage accounts um, automatically. When this isn't something extra that you have to sign up for. This is part this is the part of the responsibilities that a licensed broker in the United States has. And it is spe specifically meant for the protection of the investor. Whether you're a retail investor, whether you're an institutional investor, if you're using a brokerage account, you, these insurance are afforded to you automatically in case of whatever kind of catastrophic event that could possibly happen. And the understanding is that as a transfer agent, the, the transfer agent does not have this insurance. So if something were to happen catastrophic, it's unfortunate, but you don't have that insurance. And as you start reading into the, the financial liability that computer share doesn't take, it essentially leaves you, you know, basically with no recourse for any issues that come about, even if it's something caused by computer share itself. You know, they take very little responsibility and very little ownership for your money and your shares if you utilize them as a transfer agent um, and you decide to hold shares with them. So it's something very important to understand, you know, that it could potentially be disastrous to an, an average retail in trader if you don't understand all of the financial liability of using a transfer agent as opposed to a licensed broker. Um, you know, it, it's the other thing that, that you really need to take into account with the terms of service is the chain of, um, I want to say, uh, when you, when you have a, a, when you do business with a licensed broker, they, they're responsible for putting the, your, what's in your best interest first. A transfer agent doesn't have to do that. And in fact, if you read through, 
computer share makes it abundantly clear that they put their own and their affiliates best interest before their clients. So that's also another thing that, that you need to be aware of, you know, that the rules are very different for a transfer agent. So I cannot stress the value of understanding these terms of service and understanding what you're really getting into and all the ins and outs of it, because it, it can be an extremely big deal especially for a retail investor. And one of the things that I want to touch on with this, with the retail investor, and this information I'm, I'm getting directly from the DTC and the DTCC, as well as the SEC, that a, a transfer agent, while you can sell directly through a transfer agent, a transfer agent is not respond, does not sell at the market price. So it's, they sell at an average of the price. So when you put in a sell order through a transfer agent, they're not liable for that difference. So just a hypothetical, you know, today uh, AMC is sitting somewhere in the $16 range, okay? Hypothetically speaking, let's say by Friday, the MOAS happens, okay? We're sitting somewhere in the $100,000 range per share, just hypothetically speaking, okay? Does anybody off the top of their head happen to know what the average price between $16 and $100,000 is? I mean, I, I don't specifically know. I can't do that math that quick, but I'm going to tell you it's way less than $100,000. So when you put that sell order in through a transfer agent, you're not getting $100,000 per share. You're getting the average between that. And that's made abundantly clear in the terms of service, as well as the documentation from the SEC that, listen, when this is how direct registering shares, if you sell through a transfer agent works, it just, it is what it is. This is, this is how they function. And the other thing you need to be aware of is that they're a batch seller, which means that you may put an order in, uh, sell or buy order, and it may go through right away. However, if that batch isn't filled, it might be a few minutes, a few hours, a few days, a few weeks. It could even be a few months. That's the reality of it. And it's all based on the transfer agent's policy and how they conduct business. You know, they don't put out to the public what their sell batch is. It could be a hundred shares, it could be a thousand shares, it could be a million shares. You know, so it, it's this the lack of transparency there with that that, you know, it, it's just for me as a retail investor, I, I saw that, well, okay, if I if I want to use them and if I want to sell them, am, am I okay with that average price? knowing that they have absolutely no financial liability to me to cover the difference. So it, that's where and I started to see these red flags and started to confirm with the SEC, like, is this true? You know, and absolutely, you can sell, you can buy through a transfer agent 100%, but you need to understand how they conduct their business and, and the rules that they are applied to and apply to them, excuse me. So. You know, it, it, this is something that, that again, I, I implore you to read this stuff for yourself and understand the potential and, and call them, call computer share, ask them, what is your batch selling policy? How big a batches go through? How often do they go through? And, you know, it, it's, it's very important because they should, this is information that should be public. I mean, if the public is able to use this, this company then they should be able to supply this information because it's extremely valuable. You know, I know that if I hit, if I go and sell or buy a, a, a ticker on my, through my brokerage, I know what I'm getting. I know when I'm selling. I know how much my price per share is going to be. You know, there's, there's no guessing games. I'm not getting batched in or batched out. It, it, and they have this, they're liable for mistakes like that. So, you know, it's just that extra level of, of understanding that of the difference between a broker and a, a transfer agent if you're actually thinking about buying or selling for the through the transfer agent. And of course, you know, you could always go to your broker, your licensed broker, and, and if you have shares that are DSR and you know, DRS, excuse me, um, 
to have them take those shares back from computer share and sell them through your brokerage. But just understand the same way there, there's also time restraints. I, I believe uh, they legally have to transfer within seven business days. But again, still, you know, if this pr if you're looking to to sell, you know, here and now, when when you ha when the price is hit for your exit strategy, you know, do, are you content to wait up to seven days to have these transferred back into a brokerage account so that you know you're not getting an average price, you're getting the legitimate price. Um, and again, I, I cannot stress enough, enough many times that, that this is all the information within the terms of service that you're agreeing to when you open an account with computer share. Um, so, Darth, I went ahead and posted so in the SEC it, yes. website's uh, information uh, uh, for everybody to see there with the holding securities and getting the facts and, and understanding that, you know, uh, maybe I'm jumping a little bit ahead of what, what it is that you're saying here, but um, just showing people that, you know, a DR, what a direct registration share is versus having it in street name registration through your brokerage. And then, and then sometimes I think what a lot of people seem to be confusing is, is that they think that direct registration is more like a physical certificate, right? And, and I think that some, you know, when people feel like that, that direct ownership is something that, um, is somehow that physical type certificate, but it's really actually just, I think what a lot of what you're saying is, is it's really just the same thing as, as the same share held through the DTCC in street, uh, in, in a, in a book entry form with your name on it. A hundred percent. And that, that's a great point. Yeah, it, it is. Um, because under, you do get a, you will get an, a, an account. I'm sure if you've, if anybody has been on Reddit, you've seen them and it's the picture of the, the piece of paper from computer share with the account information and everything like that. That is your physical documentation of a directly registered share. You don't get a physical share certificate. You get documentation from computer share that says these shares and they have account numbers linked to them that that's your doc, that's your physical documentation of it is a, a physical share is, is very very different than than that i mean when we're talking the physical certificate you literally get a physical it almost looks like uh uh like a um a diploma almost but and it, it's a, a a piece of paper and it has the all the information about the the licensing number on it. It's it, what it's documented on your name on it, everything. That's a physical share certificate. D D DRS is not the same thing. Yes, you get a, a, a physical copy of the information, but it is a it is essentially an invoice from Computer Share with that information on it. It's not an actual physical stock certificate. If you lose a physical stock certificate, it's, that's bad. Like you're, that is like real bad. It, it, it is insanely difficult, if not impossible to replace that physical certificate. With direct register share, you can lose that invoice and it, you basically just lost a piece of paper. You can go back into your account and call computer share, say, hey, can I get a new one of these? They go ahead and shoot it out to you. You're good to go if that's the route you take. So it's very important to distinguish between the two of those. Really, legitimately, the only difference between it being in your broker's name or in your name is the name itself. I, it, it literally has no, there, it's not looked at any differently. It's not handled any differently. It's not processed any differently. It's just instead of it being in your broker's name, it's in your name. It doesn't protect it from anything. It doesn't give you any extra layers of security. It's just, it's in your name. That's it. Um, and, you know, a lot of people like to, you know, uh, equate it to the whole, say, well, uh, you know, if, if my name isn't on my, uh, the, the deed to my house, do I really own my house? Well, yeah, you own your house. I mean, come on, man. It's like, it, it, it's, that's like, you know, trying to compare apples and oranges here, you know? Yes, I get it, you know, it, it has your name on it, but it, in the grand scheme of things is how the, the government and how these private organizations like the DTC and the DTCC look at it, 
is no different than if it's in your broker's name or your name. So it was a great point with that and uh, absolutely right, dead on. That they are two very, very different things. Well, three very different things anyway. Um, one of the other things that I want to go into with the whole computer share thing and directly registering your shares is that, you know, a, a lot of times there's this idea that um, it, it's, it can prevent certain events from happening and it has the ability to affect the way the market works. Um, you know, it, the market is a very complex machine that has been something that's been working and going for, for decades upon decades upon decades. And simply putting a name on something isn't going to affect how the market works. You know, it, it, it just doesn't. It, it, there's, there hasn't been a, a, a time in computer shares 43, almost 44 years of history that it, it has been used to manipulate market function or change how the market functions. It's simply a, just one more piece to the puzzle of how the stock market works. Um, so it, it, just to understand that is is very valuable because it, it really it lets you as, a, as a, a, an investor, a retail investor, take a step back and say, okay, well, now that I understand this, these things make more sense to me. And, and it, it, I can understand why, say, for instance, we're not, you don't see uh, drastic changes in dark pool percentage usage based on the, the registration of these shares. Because it simply is not going to affect that. It just, it just can't. Um, so that being said, I'd like to take a little step further into understanding exactly not just what computer share does but who they do it with and one of the things that i discovered along the way with computer share was they don't just do transfer agent things transfer agent uh functions they they have their hands in in a, a lot of the financial market and, and they they focus on many different areas in all of finance, not just specifically with um, the stock market. And as I was digging through and, and, and discovering, um, one of the things that computer share does when they do when you do choose to sell with them because they are not a licensed broker is they use what they call a panel of brokers. And essentially, this changes, again, I, I want to make this very clear that this is only pertains to the United States, but they use what's called a panel of brokers. And this could be a normal broker. Uh, it could be um, any, anyone that deals with either the retail or institutional trades. Uh, they Market makers is a huge one that they utilize. And they tend to focus primarily on companies that they are affiliated with. Um, you know, they've already have an established business relationship. So utilizing companies that they're already affiliated with is beneficial to them. It's beneficial to their partners. Um, and digging through and looking through the investor relations, because again, you know, computer share is a publicly traded company. Uh, they put out investor reports every single year, and in their 2010 investor relations briefing, uh, Computer Share took on an, as, as an affiliate and a new business partner as Citadel. Um, this is not Citadel Securities, to confuse the two. This is Citadel, the hedge fund. Um, in case you are unaware, uh, Citadel Securities is the market maker. Citadel, the company, is the hedge fund, both of which founded, run by everybody's favorite, Kenny Mayo. So um, when you start to look into the broker selection and the broker panels, you're going to see that the affiliation with Citadel is going to put Citadel Securities in a prime spot to be utilized as, on this panel of brokers. 
Now, does that mean that computer share will 100% use Citadel? No, it doesn't. But what it does mean is they can. And the affiliation with Citadel makes it more likely that one hand is going to watch the other. Um, also, a key thing that I'd like to point out here and something that we're all fully aware of that Citadel is highly active in is bankruptcy. So for them to take on, or as I should say, bankrupting, you know, quality companies in the United States for their own profit. So when you look at its relationship to computer share, what computer share actually does, who regulates them, and then add in the affiliation to Citadel, this makes perfect sense. When you look at uh, like the Toys R Us, what happened with Toys R Us, what happened with Sears, you know, what they tried to do with AMC, what they tried to do with GME. So it's, it's very important to understand that, okay, if everything that I've said so far has jived with you and you think that, you know, okay, this is still the way, this is still something that, that I feel comfortable with. And believe me, if it is, go for it. Like I said, I don't do financial advice. That's not my thing. Um, that's not what this is about. I just want everybody to understand who computer share is doing business with and why they're doing business with them. You know, so it just, for me, it became more and more red flags, more and more questions, more and more, well, well, can I really, is this something that I as a retail investor find as, as valuable to me? And as a retail investor, I, I, it's not for me. Does that mean it's not for everybody? No, absolutely not. Everybody has to make their own decision. And I'm going to give a, a prime example because I know that this question is probably going to come up. Uh, both GME and AMC use computer share as their license transfer agent, as well as 38% of every single other company traded on this New York Stock Exchange. Um, they utilize these the computer share as a transfer agent because they're contractually obligated to do so. Um, when we hear on the quarterly calls, when you know CEO AA says, you know, I have this many shares, and I was it, this was made up 60, 80 percent of my pay, and my plan is to sell this on this date, just like we saw with with the two sales that went through that he was completely transparent about. Well, he knows this information because he has these shares registered with computer share. And he has them that way so that he can honor his contractual obligation to say to the board, to say to the owners, to say, you know, to anybody that, you know, look, this was what I was contractually obligated to do. This is what I did. And ideally what and it's like he said in his last call that he's now put the sale of these um, shares into the, the, the third party is making these. He's taken them out of his hands. You know, he's preparing for retirement and down the road whenever. You know, so he utilizes this service so that he can have these contractual obligations honored and that nobody can ever question that. And at the same time, he can come to the owners, the retail investors or any investor and say, look, here's what I'm doing. Here's how much I'm doing. Here's how often I'm doing it. And he's being as transparent as possible. Now, ideally, I can't say specifically for him because I, I'm not him, nor am I his broker or transfer agent. But uh, assuming with what he said that he's having this third party take these shares out of computer share and then selling them through his broker, through his broker. And that's how he's able to, to say, listen, this is what I sold. This is what I had left. This is what I got it in payment. This is what I have in my own shares. This is where I'm going there. And, and the understanding is, is this is what D DRS and computer share was meant to do. This is the purpose that it really serves in the market is so that these heads of these companies or anybody for that matter, who's contractually obligated to hold a company's share for however long is able to, to prove it. 
is it, it's it, it when it comes down to it on the backside of it, it's about being transparent because anybody can come up and say hey you know oh i sold uh, you know 10,000 shares today okay well that's great so how many do you have left are you still within your contractual obligation for this well well i don't know you know and this way he can prove it so that's one of the primary functions and i, I believe that is the most important function of directly registering shares is is you know, are you contractually obligated to to hold the hold X number of shares for X amount of time? And can you prove it? And that's the primary function of that. So, you know, not to get anything twisted or confused. No, I don't believe that AMC or GME is in cahoots with Citadel or anything like that. No, it's not. You know, the, and he's been AA has been very upfront about using this third party. So it would make sense to me, put, connecting the dots, that what he's actually doing is using this brokerage to pull these shares from computer share so that the panel of brokers that computer share uses doesn't get these shares or doesn't have access to these shares. Yeah, that's, so, that's actually been something he's been very quite uh, clear about as how he's using specific brokers uh, separate from computer share to distribute his shares back into the market. He's been very adamant about making sure that Correct. was a point, and I thought that was always kind of interesting uh, because I don't think people really keyed in on the idea that he had made a point about how he was specifically choosing a brokerage to distribute his shares, and it was not computer share. So right, yeah, that's, right, that's and a and great you know, point. yeah, 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 and that's that's the thing. It's like, listen, I. I have very rarely met or interacted with or even seen a CEO who has as much transparency to the, his investors and, and owners of that company as he has. And, you know, there, I, I can see on a lot of those tweets, ever since I saw that first choke on that tweet that he sent out, it just was, I, I just saw a lot of Elon and how he was tweeting things out. And, and, you know, he doesn't have to necessarily come right out and say A, B, C, D. You know, he come, he might say A and D, and but there's clearly enough information there to read between the lines and say, okay, you know, and draw a logical conclusion. And then when you when you hear him speak and you hear the information that he provides on these quarterly calls, you know, it just reaffirms that he's fully aware of what's going on and trying to get out as much information as he can and be as transparent as he can, which I find invaluable and just straight awesome. So, you know. It is what it is. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I want to get across and want to get out as, as a point here, too, is that everything that I've presented today, I, I presented to the Reddit community back in uh, September, September, October. And by the end of October, I had been blanketed banned from every uh, subreddit, stonk subreddit from Wall Street bets down to, you know, the, the, the smallest little mom and pop one. Um, for providing this information, because a lot of the information that was out there was uh, very Disneyland, so to speak. I mean, when wishing on stars and whatnot, it, it just became uh, a very one-sided sales pitch. That it, it, it was like, I just, ah, man, you know, when, when you sell fantasy for a living, you kind of pop in and say, uh, this is a little bit too good to be true. Let me start digging. Let me start digging. And, you know, the, these are the, the things that came out, and the, the information that I found. And, and it took me about five weeks to compile this with the help of, you know, uh, my fam on, on Discord. And, you know, it just, it, it, this is what is, has, uh, what I've come up with and what, I, what I've presented. And, you know, I, I want to go a few steps further in maybe a, another poll or something like that. But I just really wanted to get out the basics understandings of, of what you're dealing with when you're when you're dealing with a, a transfer agent as opposed to a licensed broker because it is very very different animals to deal with and for the retail investor it can be very confusing it can be very difficult to find this information and you know especially if you have a a, a site that you trust that you're you're searching for this information but there's a lot of behind the scenes information and a lot of behind the scenes gears turning that are, are preventing this information from getting out there so again I, I just want to reiterate the point that this is not financial advice if you read through this information and you find that that you know computer share and, and directly registering your shares is for you man that's your decision you owe an explanation to nobody 
And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's the same thing as an exit strategy. Everybody has their own strategies. You don't owe an explanation to anybody about it. It's you. It's your money. It's your finances. The only thing I can ever say is please, please, please educate yourself every time, every time. And that's that's all I'm trying to do with this. I said the same thing to everybody constantly. Yeah, it's your money. It's your shares. You do what you want with your money and your shares. Absolutely. 100%. And, and I really, you know, I, thank you so much for coming on and, and uh, talking about this and um, giving everybody this valuable information. I think it's, uh, um, I, I'm not trying to rush you here. Is that, did, was that the end of, of everything that you wanted to oh. talk about for today? Yeah, man. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, okay. I'd, I'd love to see if anybody has any questions or anything like that. There actually was yeah, some, absolutely. some questions. So let's go ahead and open it up to question here. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to pull back up while, cause there is a little bit of a delay here. And I, I know there were some questions. Um, uh, Active Douglas had asked uh, when it's average price, is there a time frame? Is it based on the date of submission or when they receive process it? Um. This is again, this is one of those questions where you actually have to would have to physically call computer share and ask them what it is. Essentially, you're you're when you initiate a sale directly through computer share, that's when the process starts. So it, it, however long it takes them to process it or whatever whenever they uh, put your sale request into a batch to move it, you know, it, there's those times where it could essentially, if if you're seeing the price of just let's say a hundred dollars and you hit sell at that point, that's ideally when your that the average idea should start. So you you've clicked sell, it says a hundred dollars. What's the average between? What are they? Th- is it a day? Is it an hour? Is it a week or a month? And that's where you need to get the set specifics from Computer Share. And they're the only ones that can tell you. Um, so to answer your question, it, it it starts when you initiate the sale, but its length of time is something that's determined by computer share and you have to contact them directly to find out. Um, so on this show, we actually went through the process of buying a single share and then selling a single share because mm-hmm. I – you know, I wanted to be able to provide people the opportunity to see what the process was like, see what the brokerage uh, looked like through their um, through their system, um, and I went through all that. And I and I've I've already sent you information with uh, the receipt of my partial share ownership uh, when I in fact was purchasing a yeah. single share, uh, which I thought was very very interesting. And I'm sure you haven't had time to really kind of cover that, and may, maybe we could save that for another another time, but. Um, you know, that to me was a huge warning flag. The idea that they're telling me that a, a share will be in my name in book entry form and then telling me that I, it was only a partial share was very, very right. um, <laughs> confusing to say the least. If you know that ownership of partial shares is not really a thing, then it would be impossible right. for you to have your name in a book entry form of a, of a full sing, of a of a partial share. So uh, that was that was right, interesting. Yeah, right. uh, the other thing that I always kind of mention to everybody too, uh, uh, you know, as as part of one of the things that I kind of say is like golden rules, is is for me, and this is just spe- specifically for myself. And maybe you can confirm this. Um, I will not consider a brokerage that does not have pre-market and after-hour trading abilities. And the reason for that is is that some of the biggest moves uh, happen during those periods of time historically on uh, short squeezes. So, um, right. My, to my knowledge, uh, computer share only allows trading during, uh, market open hours. I do not know of any way to sell oh, shares. Sure. So uh, having said that, uh, for me personally, and again, this is just how I feel. I don't want to, I don't want my, to be limited on when I can sell when the time comes, I don't want to be limited exactly. on when I can sell. And so it violates one of my golden rules. But uh, one of the things I kind of, I, I think yeah. I had sent you a question uh, that I wanted to, oh, yep. you're, you're going to verify that. It sounded like you said, yeah. Yeah. You, well, okay. Let's even take this a step further. Okay. Um, okay. Com- first of all, you are a hundred percent correct. You can only trade during open market hours, utilizing computer share as your selling agent. That being said, 
computer share also has it terms that they can only process orders of a certain amount through their electronic system once it reaches a specific number which i originally it was a hundred thousand dollars now i believe they've upped it to one million dollars in a single transaction anything over that amount you need to physically write a letter to them to process the order you can't call them you can't email them you can't process this order electronically so not only are you constrained by open market hours selling but if the price per share goes through the roof you're either going to be limited to how many you can sell electronically at a time or you're going to be stuck <laughs> snail mailing in a sale request to them so that's something else to consider too so you know it's not just the matter of it it's only open mark you know you're only able to do these transactions during open market hours but you know when the moas happens and we're looking at ridiculous numbers per price per share and you want to go ahead and sell well, <laughs> okay get out your pen and paper and your stamps because that's the only way to do it yeah uh the other thing i sent you a question uh, uh just to be honest with you guys <laughs> when darth had given me this information to kind of i wanted to cover everything and make sure and double check everything uh, and he provided the uh, computer share terms of service. I actually started reading them when I on the show had done. I did exactly what he said, the whole South Park, you know, like, yeah, yeah, I agree <laughs> to the terms and services and never read any, not a single one of them. Uh, I did read some of the things that popped up, but I didn't actually go through the terms and services and actually read them. Uh, and then when you had sent me the link. I actually went through and started reading some of the stuff. I kind of skimmed it a little bit, but uh, one of the things that just kind of struck me as odd, and I hadn't seen it before, was is that the fees, if you get down to section 10 of their terms and services, it says fees. And it says you agree to pay to computer share the non-refundable fees set forth on the order form for your access and use into the online service, the service fees. Except as otherwise set forth in the order form, the service fees are billed in advance of the provision of the corresponding online service ordered. Uh, but later on down in the bottom of this thing, it says, um, uh, let's see here. Actually, I, I just should keep reading. All service fees invoiced by computer share must be paid in, uh, by you in full within 30 days of the date of such invoice unless otherwise set forth on the order form. Failure to pay your service fees within 15 days or uh, of the due date may result in immediate suspension or termination of your access to the online service and computer share's sole and absolute discretion. You'll be charged interest on any overdue fees at a rate of 1.5% per month, uh, which is way more than what they're than than uh, uh, any of the. Uh, short hedge funds are being charged right now for shares for AMC <laughs> and 18% per annum. But the part that really stood out uh, to me was, is that uh, there was something in here and I'm not actually seeing it right this second, but it said that they were annual fees and I'm not seeing it right this second right now, but um, I was like, wait a minute, annual fees on them holding your shares. Is that, do you remember reading that? I don't know. It's just something that I kind of, it stood out to yeah, me. And I, it... Go ahead. Yeah. It, it, um, again, because they're they're not a broker, they're a transfer agent. There's fees associated with the maintenance of your account. Essentially, is what it comes down to, and it's it can range. The, the fee is not a set specific fee. It's based on um, utilization, like how often you're buying and selling through Computer Share. It's also based on the uh, amount in the account. And, but essentially, you have to look at it as um, like those silly fees that cr some credit cards have. Oh, we have a maintenance fee. Oh, so you know, you you stick my stuff in a computer, and uh, you know, ever so often, you're you got to refresh the screen or whatever, whatever the, the 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 credit card maintenance fee things that they they put up there. But basically, it's similar to that. That it's a it's a fee for them to maintain the account with you for you. And that, that's another great question, because I believe that it, it's something that's a, it account specific, like they're, they're not you know, the, that maintenance fee is not going to be the same on an account with, let's say, uh, $10,000 worth of 
uh, of stock as opposed to somebody that has ten million dollars worth of stock. Okay, they're not paying the same maintenance fee. Is so every individual who decides he needs to really contact computer share and say, hey, for my account, what are these fees going to be? Hmm. But, dog but then is something also to look into. Okay, go ahead. Something else to also look into on that is that if you go back to uh, number eight there, the uh, suspension limitation determination uh, clause that they have in there, that also it, it kind of falls into place along with the fees and and you know their warnings about well it needs to be paid in this time and this time and this time and then if you go back and you look at you know the suspension limitation and terminations they're they can basically terminate your account for whatever reason they want whenever they want for period and and again this is something that, that you're agreeing to to comply with when you sign up to use utilize this service so it's something to be aware of that you know am i saying that they're going to go out and cancel every single retail investor's account just when the moas happens no i mean that's just ridiculous but just to be aware that that there are things in there so that say you you don't pay these fees say you don't have you don't honor this agreement that you've entered into you know, you need to be aware that that they can absolutely cancel your account and they are not financially liable to you in any way, shape or form for cancellation of this account. So, you know, it's just one more thing to to take into consideration when you're when you're talking about, you know, is is this right for me as a retail investor? And do I feel comfortable with that as a retail investor? I had um, there's there's uh, I'm gonna try and read this name but I'll just read the last part it says live free or die uh, says uh, the way the squeeze work has to do with our ability to uh, hodl and make them buy back real shares the thesis is that uh, they have to go through many synthetics uh, to get real shares thus in inflation inflating the price um, and and I, and I guess I don't know if you want to touch on that that might be something you want to touch on or not but if you don't I will. <laughs> It's, it's up to you. Okay. Well, right. Well, the first thing that you need to understand is that synthetics are never, were never designed or meant to go into the lit market. Okay. This is, there's something that are utilized for the dark pool, which when the dark pool is utilized as it's designed, as it was designed for, not to manipulate the price of the stock, but to prevent these massive institutional buys and sells from drastically impacting the stock on the retail investor side, then it, once these synthetic shares actually hit the lit market, which is, uh, man, how do I want to say this? Um, pretty much the, the, the concept of why we're in the situation that we're in right now is because so many of these synthetics had been created that they actually did hit the lit market. They become as real as a real share. It just it is it is a real share. If a retail investor or an institutional investor is able to purchase a, a synthetic share, it becomes real. Period. It needs to be purchased back the same as a physical share, the same as the float of 74 million in the case of GME and in the case of the 513 million in there. So when you're talking about synthetics, every synthetic that was sold into the lit market, and they were theoretically, needs to be bought back. So, yes, that it is that. That is the the idea behind it. That you know these these shares were never meant to hit the lit market. They did because of shenanigans that that these hedge funds and market makers thought that they were going to get away with. And now you know just because you bought a synthetic doesn't make it not real. In fact, it makes it real because you we were never supposed to buy it. We were never supposed to have access to it. So yeah, yeah. Um... I don't see any other questions rolling in here at the moment. So I guess um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up just for time's sake, because uh, I know people's attention spans are, are kind of short. I know, my, I know mine is, I have ADD. So 
But what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to I'm going to let everybody know here. Uh, thanks so much for coming on the sh uh, show today, Darth, um, and presenting the information that you had. Uh, like I like I, I think we all like to say apes together strong. Um, but I'm going to I'm going to leave a little quote here. Um, they smile on our faces with hidden agendas in plain sight for those with eyes to see by Jose R. Coronado uh, from the book called The Land Flowing with Milk and Honey. And I, I just would like to challenge all of you to realize that this information is not hard to find. It takes time. All it does, Darth has done a great job here of, of digging out what it is that our eyes in plain sight can see. But they smile and they put this out in front of us and then tell us, here you go, here's what you should do. I, I really appreciate you coming on here, Darth, and um, opening our eyes, because really I feel like we're just walking around with our eyes shut. Yeah, and you know what, Casey, I, I can't thank you enough, because you were on that initial space call that I did on Twitter about this. You had fantastic questions, and man, it, the exposure for this in a place where it just where it can't be canceled is invaluable. And I, I just want to make it really clear that, listen, I might be the face or the voice for this, but I have a lot of help behind me and support behind me. So I, I just want to take a second and just, just thank Truth. I just want to thank the Queen, uh, Dean Miguel and the Doctor, because, you know, all of these guys are in my, my Discord family. And, man, every single one of them has been a huge support for me. And we've all contributed a lot to this and there, there's still a lot more to come. You know, we're, we're digging right now. So hopefully I'll have some more information to bring out about it. And man, I just appreciate Ape Nation because man, there is a bunch of people out here who are brilliant, who take the time and do the DD and without you know, a platform like Casey has given me here today, it, it, this information just wouldn't be readily available. So I, I can't thank you enough for this and Ape Nation for, for sticking to it. And, you know, let's go, man. AMC and GME to the moon. To, to the, moon. the moon. Absolutely. Well, guys, it's Hell that yeah. time of the day. I did a double header today and I haven't done one of those before, but I, this was well worth it. Um, Eat, sleep, drink, guys. You know, be ready for tomorrow. It's another day. <laughs> um, spend time with your family. Spend time with your friends. Uh, spend time with your pets. Uh, maybe go beat up some kids on a computer game on the internet. But above all else, don't just have a good night. Have a great night. Awesome. Thanks, man. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh...